Good day, brothers and sisters, and uh, welcome to our number 13 in the viewing, our higher calling. Uh, I welcome you back. It has been a time since uh, we uh, did the presentation. We had to go through an 18-part uh, series on a higher calling, and uh, it has been a break of uh, one week. We were in... Uh, a calm meeting. I was in a calm meeting, so I could not stream. But uh, I welcome you back to the presentation of today. And uh, this is number 13 in the series, uh, Higher Calling. And today I'm looking at uh, a work of uh, Ezekiel chapter 9, a work of uh, Ezekiel chapter 9. Don't worry if you hear some sounds in the background. We are again preparing for another CAM meeting, which is starting on Thursday, a 10-day CAM meeting uh, starting on Thursday evening. And so if you hear any sounds in the background, it is because people are doing some cleanliness, people are walking around, there's a lot of vehicles moving and all that. And so uh, you will bear with me. I hope I'll be audible enough so that uh, the sounds that are coming from outside may not interfere with the message. Otherwise, I want us to say a short word of prayer and then uh, we continue. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and uh, we thank you for thy love and thy mercies. And as we go through this, we pray that thy presence may be with us and continue guiding us in all truth. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a work that uh, we have been given to do in the book of uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 9. And uh, I just want us to look at uh, it uh, in, a, in a short while. And then uh, the Lord will bless us all. Because we have been looking at, us, uh, at the series, Our Higher Calling, and uh, God is calling us to do something. God is calling a people who are separate. And we know that um, we have been uh, separated from the, uh, the churches and from the world with the mighty cleaver of truth, the first, the second, and the third angels' messages. And this we have to proclaim. Nothing has to preoccupy us in this work that we have been given. And so when you read Ezekiel chapter 9, it's about the work of judgment and uh, a people who have been entrusted with the work of going around the world to be able to warn the world of the impeding judgment and uh, to tell them that there is a crisis that is coming. And so as we look at the book of Ezekiel chapter 9, we are looking at the judgment that is about to fall upon the church of God and what the watchmen have to do. Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 1 says, He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand, and one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side, and they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon uh, he was to the threshold of the house, and he was... Uh, he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by the side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abomination that be done in the midst of thereof. And so the work of the watchman was to go in the midst of the city. The city which was Jerusalem and cry for the abomination that be done therein. The same thing is found in uh, Isaiah chapter 58. The book of Isaiah chapter 58 also has a, a word for us. The book of Isaiah chapter 58, it says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. So the watchman was sent to go the watchman was sent to go and show the house of jacob or he had to do a work in the midst of the city to show people their 
transgression, to show people their transgression. And this is the work that the Lord has entrusted us with. This is the work that the Lord has entrusted us to do. There, uh, the last, uh, the, 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 the rejecters of the truth must, must be offered, uh, um, must be offered um, a chance. We are told that uh, those who have been in truth must be offered a chance again to come to accept it. And it is only when they reject it now, that is when uh, the message uh, has to go to the, to the people that um, and, uh, I'm looking out for something that um, we are told that uh, a message has to go uh, to the people and when Christ was sending uh, uh, the disciples out, he told them to go to the house of Israel first and then to the world. That um, the message had to go to the people first and then go to the world. And so we are told to sigh in the midst of the city, in the midst of Jerusalem, and proclaim the messages. Uh, and it is when they reject uh, they reject the truth then we are to go to the people of of the world and uh, this is what this is what we have been uh, trying to do to try and awake the people from their slumber. Uh, the church has uh, to be won. When you look at uh, DA, DA 820.3, DA 820.3 says that the first offers of mercy must be made to the murderers of the Savior. The first offers of mercy must be made to the murderers of the Savior, DA 820.3. And so we have a work of um, going around the world, warning the people that uh, the judgment is impending. Go uh, in, in the midst of the city. Go in the midst of the city and cry out to these people. We, we don't have to rest until uh, we have seen that everyone have been reached uh, with the, the messages. We don't have to rest until we see that the messages have been given to the people. Even if they will hear or forbear, even if they will hear or, or forbear it. And so, God will want to do for his church something in these last days. He will want to do uh, something for the church in these last days. And he's using those who are ready, those who are uh, consecrated to be able to do uh, this work that uh, he wants to be done. And... Uh, Jesus is just about to leave uh, the mercy seat of the heavenly sanctuary, as we shall be seeing uh, uh, in the in the slides that will be following, uh, and uh, put on his uh, garments of vengeance and pour out his wrath uh, in the judgments upon those who had not responded to the light God has given uh, them. And uh, before he does that, he has to send a message to all the people. He has to be able to make sure that uh, the message has reached to all the people. And he's looking for a people who are ready to be used to do this work, to a people who are ready 
to be used to do such a, a solemn work. And so the, the message that is for this time, it is not a message of peace, peace. It's a message that God is about to destroy. Because he says, and the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and the cry of all the abomination that be done in the midst thereof. And then the angels goes, um, after that, the angels are told to go and slay utterly old and young, both um, both maids and little children and women, and not come near any man upon whom is the mark. And he says that begin at my sanctuary. And so it is the straight uh, testimony to the Laodicea that um, will bring about this shaking and this slaying that is happening in the book of Ezekiel chapter 9. The messages as they go and the people, uh, uh, people receive them or reject them, this is the work of Ezekiel chapter 9. Either you receive the message and you are marked or you reject the message and then uh, you are slain. You, are, you receive the mark of the enemy. And so it is a message to prepare a ministry sanctified for the end time work. It is a, a message geared towards preparing a people for either receiving the seal of God or receiving the, uh, the, the mark of the beast. I mean, it's the child. And instead of being softened by the patient and long forbearing that uh, the Lord has exercised toward us, uh, there are those who don't fear God and there are those not who will not hear anything. But we know there are limits even to the forbearance of God and uh, what he is doing and what Christ is doing in the heavenly sanctuary. Let us look at uh, Great Controversy, page 480. Great Controversy, 480. It says that um, in the typical service, only those who had come before God with confession and repentance and whose sins through the blood of the sin offering were transferred to the sanctuary had a part in the service of the Day of Atonement. So in the great day of final atonement and investigative judgment, the only cases considered are those of the professed people of God. The judgment of the wicked is a distinct and separate work and takes place at a later period. Judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it begins at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel? First Peter 4.17 And so we find that... Uh, we are told to go and sign in the midst of the city. And the angel with the inkhorn is putting a mark upon those who are receiving these messages. And then those who are not receiving the messages will actually uh, be slain. They will be slain. If, if we are not... Uh, getting the mood of receiving the seal of God, then we are getting the mood of receiving the mark of the beast. And in the typical service, it is only those whose sins had gone in repentance before them. And it, the professed people in the typical uh, day of atonement, it is the professed people who are actually considered. And it's only those who came before God with confession and repentance and whose sins through the blood of sin offering were transferred to the sanctuary. So there are many people who are professing the name of the Lord, but it is only those whose sins are coming in repentance before and are being transferred in the sanctuary that will receive the seal of God. But even the professed people of God whose sins are not going before them, they will never receive the seal of God, but will be numbered amongst those who shall be slain in Ezekiel chapter 9. And so it is a work of sifting that is going on. And uh, uh, the prophet looking down the ages had this time presented before him in visions. Um, when you look at um, the nations of this age have been recipients of unprecedented masses. The choices of heaven's blessing have been given them, but increased pride, covetousness, adultery, 
contempt of God and uh, base ingratitude are written against them. They are first closing up their account with God. But that which causes me to tremble is the fact that those who have had the greatest light and privileges have become contaminated by the prevailing iniquity. So it's not just about the sins of the world, but it is about the, uh, the, the people whom actually we should tremble for. It's the people who have received the greatest light and privileges, but have become contaminated by the prevailing iniquity. Influenced by the unrighteous around them, many even of those who profess the truth have grown cold and are borne down by the strong current of evil. The universal scorn thrown upon true piety and holiness leads those who do not connect closely with God to lose their reverence for his law. If they were following the light and obeying the truth from the heart, this holy law will seem even more precious to them when thus despised and set aside, as the disrespect of God's law becomes... Uh, manifest. And uh, we are told that um, the line of demarcation, the line of demarcation uh, between its, uh, the line of demarcation between its observers and the world becomes more distinct. That uh, the church now, that line of distinction, it is not there to be seen. Love for the divine precept increases with one class according as contempt for them increases with another class. The leaven of goldness has not entirely lost its power. At the time when the danger at the time when the danger and disposition when the danger and depression sorry, of the church are greatest, the little company who are standing in the light will be sighing and crying for them abomination that are done in the land, but more especially with their prayers arise in behalf of the church because its members are doing after the man of the world. The earnest prayers of this faithful few will not be in vain. When the Lord comes forth as an avenger, he will also come as a protector of all those who have preserved the faith in its purity and kept themselves unspotted from the world. It is at this time that God has promised to avenge his own elect, which cried day and night, day and night unto him, though he bear along with them. The command is go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all abomination that be done in the midst thereof. This sign, crying ones, had been holding forth the words of life. They had reproved, counseled, and entreated. Some who had been dishonoring God repented and humbled their hearts before him, but the glory of the Lord had departed from Israel. Though many still continued the forms of religion, his power and presence were lacking. And so we are told that the sighing and crying ones had been holding forth the words of life. They had reproved, counseled, and entreated. This is the work that we have to do at this time, the work of Ezekiel chapter 9. The holding, the words of life, the reproving, the counseling, and entreating the people to come into the truth. In the time when his wrath shall go forth in the judgment, these humble, devoted followers of Christ will be distinguished from the rest of the world by their soul's anguish, which is expressed in lamentation and weeping, reproofs and warning. While others try to throw a cloak over the existing evil and excuse the great wickedness everywhere, prevalent, those who have a zeal of God's honor and a love for souls will not hold their peace to obtain favor of any. This is the work that we have to do. We don't have to look for, uh, uh, we don't have to look to obtain peace, to obtain favor with any. We have to go forth proclaiming the truth and not throw a cloak over the existing evil and excuse the great wickedness everywhere prevalent. The righteous souls are vexed day by day with the unholy works and conversation of the unrighteous. They are powerless to stop the rushing torrent of iniquity, and hence they are filled with grief and alarm. They mourn before God to see religion despised in the very homes of those who have had great life. They lament and afflict their souls because pride, avarice, selfishness, and deception of almost every kind are in the church. And so, brothers and sisters, we have a work to be done to the church. 
And we are told that here we see that the church, the Lord's sanctuary, was the first to feel the stroke of the wrath of God. The ancient men, those to whom God had given great light and who had stood as guardian of his spiritual interest of the people, had betrayed their trust. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 9, we see that those who have been entrusted with the truth, they are betraying their trust with God. They have taken the position that we need not look for miracles and the mark manifestation of God's power as in the former days. Times have changed. This word strengthened their unbelief and they say, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. He is too merciful to visit his people in judgment. Thus peace and safety is the cry from men who will never again lift up their voice like a trumpet to show God's people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. These dumb dogs that will not bark are the ones who feel the just vengeance of offended God. Men, maidens, and little children all perish together. And so as people are crying peace and safety in the ears of the worldlings and the church, there is a straight testimony which is being born by the watchmen over Israel. And so it's a message of separation. It's a clear testimony to the church of Laodicea in Ezekiel chapter 9 that will separate the world and the church into two companies, those who worship God and those who doesn't worship God. And now let us see the timing of Ezekiel chapter 9. Let us see the timing of Ezekiel chapter 9. In Spalding and Magan, we read, Thou wilt not want him to step out of thou new the situation. The de that desire is to disenthrone those kings, but that could not be, for kings must reign till Christ begins to reign. I saw in Europe, just as things were moving to accomplish their desires, there will seemingly be a slackening up once or twice. Thus the hearts of the wicked will be relieved and, uh, and hardened, but the work will not settle down. Only seem to, for the minds of kings and rulers were intent on overthrowing each other. So, while the kings of Europe are looking at overthrowing each other, God is doing something in the church and in the world. I saw that all things are intensely looking and stretching their thoughts on the impending crisis before them. The sins of Israel must go to judgment beforehand. Every sin must be confessed at the sanctuary, then the work will move. It must be done now. The remnant in the time of trouble will cry, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And so, as the nations of Europe are jostling for power and thinking to overthrow each other, the sins of Israel must go beforehand in the sanctuary and be confessed, and the watchmen must be sighing in the midst of the city and sounding the trumpet with a certain noise. For what is happening? The latter rain is coming on those that are pure. In this time of the crisis in Europe and the nations wanting to overthrow each other and just telling for power, ladies, let us try to keep quiet. The latter rain is coming on those that are pure all then, all then we receive it as formally. So uh, the timing of Ezekiel chapter 9, it is when the nations are jostling for power and they are thinking to overthrow each other. This is when actually the sins of Israel, the sign must go on in the midst of the city, the people must be warned. And uh, when the four angels let go, Christ will set up his kingdom. None receive the latter rain, but those who are doing all, they can. Christ will help us. All, all could be overcome us by the grace of God through the blood of Jesus. All heaven is interested in the work. Angels are interested. And so this is the timing of Ezekiel chapter 9. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And this is also quoted in Ezekiel chapter Nine, the Seventh Day Adventists that are speaking out and and in submission to Christ will receive the latter rain. Those Seventh Day Adventists who are putting a cloak over the existing evils and who are walking in the rebellion to the Lord will receive the mark of the beast. And so the Lord is doing a work, but uh, there the is a blindness that actually 
as, uh, as the messages are going on to the churches, as the nations of the Europe are actually jostling for the power, there is a blindness that is uh, going on inside Christendom. While the latter rain is coming to the watchmen as it were in the formerly, these are the words which are going on. They, they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and all these nations are mentioned. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking say, These men are full of new wine. So while the messages of warning are gone, going on, while the, 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 the message of the impeding judgment is going on, others and the and the latter ring is falling as formerly on the watchmen others are mocking saying that these uh, men are full of new wine this is the blindness that is going on in laodicea and they don't know that the time of visitation is just on and the ceiling is going on the final ceiling is going on and soon and very soon um, the lord will close up the work in the heavenly sanctuary now, Daniel chapter 12, verse 10 says that uh, the wise will understand, but the wicked will do wickedly. They will not understand. The wicked will do wickedly. They will not understand. And look at what FLB in connection with Daniel chapter 12, 10 says. There must be a constant development of Christian virtue, a constant advancement in Christian experience. Every individual must realize his own necessity. The heart must be emptied of every defilement and cleansed for the indwelling of the spirit. It was by the confession and forsaking of sin, by earnest prayer and consecration of themselves to God, that the early disciples prepared for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the, on the day of Pentecost. The same work only in greater degree must be done now. And it says, there must be no neglect of the grace represented by the former reign. Only those who are living up to the light they have will receive greater light unless we are daily advancing in the exemplification of the active Christian virtues. We shall not recognize the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the latter rain. It may be falling on hearts all around us, but we shall not discern or receive it. And so the wise will understand, by, but the wicked will continue doing wickedly. They will say that these men are full of wine. And we see that this is what is happening around Christendom and around the world. While the latter rain is filling the vessels and men are going about uh, um, revealing the wickedness that is happening around the world uh, uh, and not putting a cloak on evils. Others are putting a cloak on evils and crying peace, peace in the uh, ears of the people and so not preparing them for the great harvest. He says, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their course and set him for their watchman. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Then whosoever heareth the sound and trumpet and talketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them for, from me. The Lord is calling the watchman of Israel to blow the trumpet in Zion, to blow the trumpet with a certain sound. And... Uh, our work is not to cry peace. Our work is not to be lured by men and to be overtaken by the evil surrounding us, but our work is to become singular in our work. In the work of God, he needs a people who will be singular and uh stand for the Lord. We are told 
in uh, manuscript 96 page uh, 1898 that uh, we are to make no compromise with the habits and practices of the world we are told and um, this is the last thing that uh, we are reading we are told that um, we are to make no compromise with the habits and practices of the world we are to stand upon the platform of eternal truth pure unadulterated truth in this we may be considered singular but this is the lot of all who make Christ their portion. Every worker in medical mission line is to make that work a success by living in connection with the great worker. So in these last days of working, we are to stand singular, aloof from the allurements and the world maxims and proclaim the truth as it's in Jesus. And so I pray that the Lord may give us strength so that we may do this work faithfully and warn the people of the impending judgment and more so the house of Israel that probation is closing on it. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you because Lord, you will give us strength to finish the work. It is not by might or by strength, but it is by thy Holy Spirit that uh, we can only finish the work. And so we pray that you may fill us with thy Holy Spirit, that we may be able to accomplish that which you have sent us to do as watchmen in Israel. Your name be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.